So I'm changing a compressor today. I just want to point out some things. I like to try to make my job more efficient. I preach about this in my videos a lot, working smart, not hard. Try to make the least amount of trips up and down the ladder. So here's our roof hatch. And what I did was, first thing I did was I brought up my Easy Up. You can see it's already put up there. And every time I come up, I bring something up. Even though I got my rope, I still bring something up each trip up the ladder. I know that seems silly, but it cuts down on your trips, okay? You're climbing up the ladder anyways. So bring something up with you every time. And another tip too is, is you know, I'm doing a compressor change out, so I'm gonna pretty much bring my entire van up here on the roof with recovery machines, vacuum, you know, everything, okay? Each time I go down to my van to get something, I'm taking something I'm done with, okay? So I brought my tool bag up with me this time and I brought one into the rope and I've got everything tied off to where I can grab it with my hook on the other side. So that way, you know, these hooks really help tying them onto your rope and then that way I can reach down and don't have to go up and down the ladder every time now. So I've got my, the other end of my rope has a carabiner on it and it's already hooked around something. So I'm gonna pull that up. Then I'm gonna lower down the hook side of the rope and grab those items. And you see how I strategically place them down there so I can just grab them with my hook and bring them up. Just one of those silly little things, but trust me, it will make your day go easier, okay? So remember, try to remember, every time you go down to your van, take something with you. Or bring something else up that you know you're gonna need, you know? Like for instance, I'm gonna need a wet towel here in a little bit because I'm gonna be brazing a compressor in. So, you know, when I go down, I'll make sure I take a towel with me and bring it up. I might need a bucket, depending on how hot it gets today, to cool down my recovery tank. You know, it's those little things that are gonna help with the job, okay? We install these 1094 case on door closures. See how the wheel is nowhere near, nowhere near the catch? It's gotta be touching that wheel when the wheel pulls away from it. So what's happening is it's popping. Cause like, look what I'm gonna do. I'm just gonna push down on the wheel cause it's not pushing it down into the locked position. So notice that and then I pull it out. All it takes is a bump to the door and that's gonna pop up. So you notice that, so here we go, right? But watch what I do with my finger. See, it can still go down more. That's where it needs to be so that the, the strike on the wall needs to push that wheel all the way down to where it's at. So what I'm gonna do is lower these screws down and then I may even have to bend the strike. So now listen, I've adjusted it. And watch, it's gonna lock itself into the locked position now when it opens, listen. You hear that click? It went down far enough that it's locked in now. And this won't go down anymore. So you see, it, this piece right here pushes the wheel all the way down, so it just barely needs to be touching. Not enough to hold the door open. So notice the weight of the door is still gonna pull it shut. There you go, see it clicked it all the way down and into the locked position. It's on the 1094, whether it be the exposed tabs or the concealed tabs. All right, today we got a walk-in freezer and uh, we've got a dirty condenser coil. This is pretty basic, but you know, I always make these videos to help out the next guy. So uh, this is a micro-channel condenser, so you do wanna be careful about using chemicals. You wanna make sure, but that thing's pretty dirty. So we're gonna be using a Viper aerosol cleaner today because it's a uh, micro-channel safe. Technically it's non-rinse, but we'll be rinsing it. Let's see if we can't get this guy nice and clean. So my method to go about this is we turn off power to the unit. I've already confirmed that power is de-energized and the disconnect is working properly. Uh, we're gonna wet down the condenser coil with water. See if we can push any of the stuff out with water first. Then we're gonna apply the Viper foaming cleaner from the opposite side of which the dust is collected. So the condenser's direction is this way, you know, through it. So we're gonna push the foam out that way. It's gonna be our hopes, you know. It's not gonna be perfect, so. Test this out. I'm just gonna wet it down. I'm not really pushing anything, okay? It doesn't take much with something like this because it's not impacted per se. It's more or less a dust. But the micro channels can be a little difficult to clean sometimes. So that's why we're gonna use the foaming cleaner. So we're just pushing that through. See how it's coming through nice and good, but we're still gonna use the foaming cleaner. Just get the condenser nice and saturated. 
being careful not to get the motors wet. We just need, my preference is, is to have a smooth surface for the foam to push out. I don't know if there's any science behind this, but I choose to use a wet condenser. That way the foam doesn't get stuck on the dry condenser. But again, that could make no sense. That's just how I roll. This isn't gonna be perfect, but without getting it on the motor, I just wanna spray as much into this area as I can. Just kinda, again, I'm gonna have to hit it from the other side too, but I'm just gonna try to get some from this side. It's kinda tricky. Without pulling out the condenser fan blades. I don't think it warrants pulling the motors out completely. Just gonna do our best. And that's pretty much all I can do from that side. So now we're gonna hit it from this side, but you can see it's already foaming through. So we'll go ahead and being careful that this isn't hitting the motors again. And I'm try to get as much from the other side first and then get it from this side. careful though because you know as I'm doing that I'm seeing it come through the other side so you don't want to get this in the windings in the motor I'm gonna be cautious about that as you can see it's still even though I'm going the opposite direction it's still pulling the dirt out because look at how dirty the foam the brand new foam that I'm getting on there is getting so Stuff works really well getting into those spots. It's important too, again, a personal preference. When you're done cleaning a micro channel coil, take some CO2 or nitrogen, something like that, and push the moisture out because a lot of times it gets stuck in the micro channel. So we're foaming through nice and good, nice and good. Again, this stuff is technically a no rinse, but I try not to leave any chemicals. Let it sit for a minute, and then we'll rinse it off. Okay, we've sat for a couple minutes, so now we're just gonna give it a good rinse. Try to rinse the surface stuff off first. And then I'll get deep down inside once I get the surface off. Okay, now we're gonna push, push through. One of the cool things about smaller microchannel coils is you really don't need an actual hose. The pump sprayer does the work on something this small, unless it's completely impacted with grease or something. Just give it a good, good rinse. We'll rinse from the other side too. Okay, now we're gonna rinse from the other side. good see the water's coming through the other side when I push up against it so I'm just getting the surface stuff off and then we'll get in there a little bit more detailed and rinse the inside of the condenser out here in a second just trying to get the surface stuff off so that way we don't push the nasty stuff that's on the surface back into the condenser so okay so we're coming through nice and good do my best to run up and down It's not going to be perfect. Just do your best. Like I said, I'm going to have to hit some of it from the other side too, the opposite side. But I just want to do my best to get as much from the opposite side of where the dust is collected, like I already said. That's about all we're going to get on that. So we're going to go ahead and... Uh, pump this guy up a little bit more and then push the rest of this through. That's where I'm getting right up in there. Trying to push out that nastiness. Try to go in a downward direction when you're right behind the motor, that way you're not pushing it right into the motor. 
but then when you're not near a motor, just go for it. I didn't spend a lot of time, but I did my best to go ahead and rinse out the bottom of the condensing unit too. Again, I'm not gonna shine this thing up. Just got most of the big dirt out, okay? So now I'm gonna, you know, I've let it sit for a little bit. We're gonna give it adequate time just in case one of my motors got wet and then we'll start it up. So I uh, inspected everything. Something you wanna watch out for was I noticed that I've got an open electrical section with a defrost time clock, but I made sure I didn't get it wet. You know, you just gotta pay attention to what you're doing. You can't just blast stuff, okay? You don't wanna soak those motors, that kind of stuff. I gave it adequate time to dry out. Still a little bit of moisture, but I'm not gonna wait forever. Started it back up, all the motors are running. You wanna make sure everything works. You don't wanna leave and then find out that you shorted out a motor or something. So let it run for a little bit. And then if you're doing other work, then you proceed from there, but. You know, at the same time, trying to be smart and not have this area full of my tools so that way they could get wet. You know, I kept all my stuff up high. So that's pretty much it. Condensed coil cleaning, nothing too fancy. Just follow the proper procedures and you should be good to go. You always, always want to be careful when using chemicals on a microchannel aluminum condenser, okay? What I used is the Viper aerosol coil cleaner. And this is uh, aluminum safe and also safe for uh, microchannel condenser coils, anti evaporator coils. Um, it's technically non-rinsing, but you know, I really only, I don't even do that very much, even on evaporator coils. But on an evaporator coil, I'd be a little bit more okay with the non-rinsing because you've got condensation, theoretically, that would drain this off. But I, I like to rinse my stuff because on a microchannel condenser, the, the stuff gets stuck in the little microchannel holes and I just like to get it all out. Personal preference of mine, okay? So, but we're, we're doing good now. We've got nice airflow coming out that condenser. Actually see through it, it's nice and good. I can feel massive airflow through it. We're good, nice and good, nice clean condenser. So, 